When it comes to managing our money, we often think we know best. But just like our health, it's a good idea to seek the professional advice of a doctor. Think about your finances the same way you do about your health. Go to a professional, get their advice, and even get a second or third opinion just to be sure. It does no harm and can in fact do you some good. Today, we'll find out why we all need financial advice. I'm Edric Mendoza and this is On The Money. In this episode, we are joined by Pito Lawas Jr., Sales Channel Head at Sun Life Financial Philippines and Myret Yu, Financial Advisor at Sun Life Financial Philippines as well. Hello, Pito. Myret, Hello. Hi, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, let, let's start talking about uh, Financial Advisors 101. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to call it now. Um, the first thing I want to ask is, you know, many people have the perception uh, when you say financial advisor, that's equal to insurance agent. Mm -hmm. And there are many other misconceptions. P Pito, maybe you can tell us why and what are the mm -hmm. different misconceptions. Well, let me start by saying that uh, when it comes to managing our money, we, have, uh, we are all victims of misconceptions. Mm. Like uh, what we know is already the best. But more often than not, we also need guidance and uh, financial advice, professional advice in this aspect of life. Uh, just uh, like what we, you mentioned a while back, uh, seeing a doctor or right. probably consulting with an engineer or an architect in building your house. Mm -hmm. Failure to do professional financial consultations and even financial planning may lead to a higher risk of your uh, financial estates. I see. Okay. Higher risk, yeah. putting them at higher risk. Yes, okay. Yes. Other misconceptions that people have. Uh, yep, yep. Now let's address the common misgivings of financial advisors, right. uh, which can be due to several assumptions. And these are assumptions that we would like to dispel. Uh, una una doon is uh, they look at advisors say sabi nila bebentahan lang ako niyan mm. that misconception of bebentahan yes. ako niyan this is the <laughs> most bebentahan common lang. misconception yeah. okay. that we would like to dispel of the profession well it is true that uh, our advisors get a commission for the services and the advice that they give in the long run it's going to benefit you the client mm -hmm. why because your your financial uh, estate will be protected and secured for the future and uh, gone are the days when their insurance agents are actually product pushers, as we call them. Today, financial advisors are really trained, properly trained to do financial advice, financial planning, before they even prescribe a product for you. I see. Tell me a, a little bit about those trainings. Oh, well, part of the trainings, yung, like for example, uh, there is a mandated training by the Insurance Commission. Okay. Meaning to say, all insurance advisors should undergo a specific minimum training hours. And other than that, should, should also pass a licensure exam. Okay. So before you can practice your trade, certified, yeah. You have to right. be certified. You have to pass the licensure I exam. I understand. Similar to the doctors, you cannot just practice practice of without course. passing. Yeah? Similar to the lawyers. So end of mm. the day, our insurance advisors are also professionals mm. because of these training That's programs. Good. That's reassuring. Though. Yes. Okay. The, yeah. The good other the other misconception is actually the. Mm, some of the advisors for longest time, they look at them as the makulit ang hindi ka titigilan. <laughs> May kilala kong ganun. <laughs> ah, talaga. Okay, keep going. Okay. Yeah. Well, in some cases, this is a valid. So, how can this be managed? From the very start, the communication between you and your financial advisors will be very much open. Hmm. So, meaning to say, it goes both ways. If you have reservations about the things that your financial advisor is asking you, then probably you have to stop this in a while because end of the day, you probably say it's a sound advice coming from them. So most important is you develop also a relationship with these mm -hmm. financial advisors. Well, the other, uh, related to the training programs, yung hindi marunong ang financial advisors, mm -hmm. or hindi marunong yung ahen mm -hmm. Now, our law mandates that all advisors, uh, brokers, or agent distributors of financial products mm -hmm. should undergo these certain training programs. Mm -hmm. So regardless of their affiliations, whatever company they represent, be assured mm -hmm. that they are very much knowledgeable on, on the wares, on okay. the products that they're, they're selling. That so mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, here in Sun Life, actually, we, we actually uh, prescribe a higher standards of a training program. In fact, uh, we have 
affiliated ourselves with the uh, Asian Institute of Management. AIM, very yes, good. as far as training our financial consultants, okay. this is important. To make sure that you know you get th the best professionals. I mean, the word that you're using earlier. No, okay. So, um, having clarified all this, why don't you tell us about uh, benefits? Why, for example, why can't a person just do it themselves? Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, you, you, you always believe that everything that you know, yung stock knowledge, right. things that we've Kaya learned from it. college, yeah, yeah. is uh, more than enough for us to manage our funds. Okay. Uh, well, not everyone is uh, fortunate to have somebody in the family who's an investment uh, guru okay. or probably a registered financial or chartered financial consultant. Mm -hmm. But uh, most important is, the, I can say this at the very least, Insurance advisors are professionals. Mm -hmm. So meaning to say, they are trained and licensed to do financial planning. So obviously, this is the first benefit. You are assured that after talking to a financial consultant, that you have, you're getting reliable professional advice. Okay. Second, financial advisors are skilled at doing financial needs, which is based on their fact-finding interviews. Mm -hmm. Normally, a financial advisor will approach you and not prescribe a product right away. Ah. We go through a process which we call uh, financial planning. Okay. Meaning to say we uncover your needs at the moment before that's, they can even... Prescribe. I think that's good because many people will think, you know, that they're just out to sell a product. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. people will think that. So that's good to know now. It's not necessarily about the product you're saying. Keep yes. going, yeah. Will you trust Edrix, uh, let's say, for example, going back to the profession of a doctor? Mm -hmm. A doctor cannot just say, this is the medicine that you're supposed Correct. to be taking. That makes sense. So they ask several questions. So to diagnose. To diagnose. What mm. are you feeling? How long has this been? Similar to financial advisors, they go through that process. I see. This is the, what we call the fact-finding. I see. After which, when we have uncovered the needs and your priorities, these financial advisors, they know different financial vehicles in the market. Okay. They're very much knowledgeable from the most basic to the most exotic, as we call them. Right. Because in the different stages of a man's life, based on studies, you get five to seven times life insurances, depending five on- Five to seven. Yeah, mm -hmm. Five to seven times. Maybe at the time, at the first time you're going to get this is when you're single. You're single and probably you get married, get married with a kid, have a yeah. job, prepare mm -hmm. for your retirement, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So the different stages of your life, there will be di different mm -hmm. product prescriptions. I understand. Yes. Let's, let's go to, to Myret. I'd mm -hmm. like to find out because you're in a unique position. 14 years already yeah. as a financial advisor and some of my friends are also your yeah. clients. Tell us about from your experience um, and your interaction with um, clients, what, make, what are the big benefits of having a financial advisor? Well, um, as a financial advisor for 14 years, I think uh, one of the privilege that I have is um, being able to make a difference in the lives of these mm -hmm. clients. Um, initially, it might be small, but eventually, you know, it can become really significant. Sure. Um, I remember that uh, there would be times where uh, it, it really gives uh, self-confidence to me when mm -hmm. I'm able to deliver a check to um, uh, oh, somebody, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, loss of a loved one, or even just helping my clients reach um, their financial goals in uh, planning for their retirement or reaching a milestone like sending their kids to school, mm -hmm. helping them uh, do you know, regular Achieve savings things, because yeah. I'm the one who calls them and tells right. them, hey, your premium is due or right. um, we need to settle this. They are busy people and so by helping meet with them and uh, making sure that I'm the one who um, reminds them right. of their obligations, then, you know, I, I feel like I'm in the right profession. Right. Yeah. You genuinely like to help people. I think yes. that's why you've been there for so many years and you're one of the top performers <laughs> I hear, uh, Pito was saying. So that, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, so that's what keeps you going. You yes. really want to be able to help and it, it fulfills you to see that lives yeah. are changed yes. and impacted by yeah. sound financial yeah. advice. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Myret. Um, what Can you tell me, and maybe our viewers now, so if a viewer is interested in now choosing a financial advisor, what tips can you give in selecting? Okay. Like for example, I was sharing myself. I, I don't <laughs> necessarily want someone I might know. What advice can you give? Okay. When choosing a mm -hmm. financial advisor, these are some basic tips that I can give you. First, uh, try to find out what company they are affiliated with. Do your research, Edric. It's so easy I uh, will. nowadays. <laughs> it's all in your fingertips. Yeah. Okay, do your research. Is that company stable, strong? Mm. 
Is that company known to uphold the highest ethics and the market standards? Are they trustworthy as a company? Uh, end of the day, you would know, before you even transact with your financial advisor, try to find out what company they are affiliated with. Okay. And second, it's about the advisor. As they say... It's about the advisor. Yes. Okay, explain and that. That sounds interesting. interesting. You only buy products from people that you know, you like, and you trust. Yes. The no, know and the trust. like will be much easier, mm -hmm. but the trust factor will be much important. Okay. So then again, you go back to trying to check out, ask from your friends, your right. family members who are the uh, financial advisors that they, they know, know. Mm -hmm. and they trust. Try to find out if you are at ease talking about right. money matters right. with them. Right. And if there are makulit ones, you can just <laughs> say, you know, I'm not comfortable with you, look for someone else. Uh, I think maybe one of the final questions I want to ask, at least f um, for this initial interview is, is there a cost to this? to getting advice from a financial advisor? Uh, let's say, I, hey, I want to consult um, Marit afterwards. Is there a cost for, go ahead. Well, well in the U.S., there is a prof uh, professional fee. Right. Um, we're privileged here in, in Manila, the, in the Philippines, that um, financial advice, although we do it as a profession and we try to upgrade our knowledge yearly or a lot, e no? yeah, seminars, conventions, right. but um, our advice is actually without any cost. So clients to, should take advantage of that. Like um, <laughs> I, I, sometimes I text or I email right. my clients when there's um, new market trends or when there's um, something that they need to know that's happening or going on with the interest rates or something like that. And that's an advantage actually to the clients. They should take advantage. Hold that thought. We just have to take a short break right now. Stay with us. On The Money, we'll be right back. Still with us are our friends from Sun Life Financial, Pito Lawas and Myret Yu. They will answer some of the questions you sent to us via email, Twitter, and Facebook. Now, Melissa Hecolea has those questions. Hi, Edric. Hi, Mel. Hello to you both. That was interesting, actually, finding out about why we need financial advisors. Anyway, we've got a lot of questions. The first one comes from Jamie. Jamie from Basig says, I'm already in my mid-60s and married and don't have insurance. I'm now retired. Should I still get insurance? And when is one too old to get insurance? Can you be too old? Okay. Well, again, there are factors to consider based on this one. Why do people get life insurance? There are basically three reasons why they get life insu insurance. First, they have the need for it. The need might be protection, uh, meaning to say if something happens to me as a breadwinner, I have to live certain amount of money to my, to my loved ones. Second is I like to protect my property, or what you call the estate, to pay, uh, payment for estate tax. That can be another need. The other factor is how much you can afford. At age 60, Jamie, I don't know how much you can set aside, how much money you can set aside. So it depends on how much you can set aside before you can put, we can prescribe a product for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. the last but not least, the uh, last factor is the health. Jamie, mm -hmm. I don't know how well is your health how today, health, right? but yeah. as you know, not all insurance companies will accept uh, you as standard dependent on your health condition. Why don't you try athlete? You know, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> very healthy now. So, but you're saying uh, it's never too old. Yeah. I mean, you're never yes. too old. But yeah. would you advise them? I assume you would advise them to get as early as yes, yes, yes as when possible. they're younger. When right. you're younger, the premiums are actually cheaper. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
But, but, but yeah. then again, she, he will still be accepted at age 60. There's no depends, problem. We can insure yeah. until mm -hmm. age 70. Mm -hmm. But the premiums are higher. Yeah. Yes, it really depends I on the health condition. Oh, so I 70 understand. is the cutoff. But of course, yeah. the other factor is the older you get, at the, right. later said, the higher the premiums. Natural. The more it's the cost. Of course, of course. Actual signs. So it might, not, yeah. it, it might not be worth it if it's that high. Yeah. He can surely try with Sun Life. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, Jamie. Yeah. Go to Sun Life. Check it out. See if it's for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's another uh, question here. Yeah. yeah. Miranda writes, I have a few hectares of property in the province that I am not using. Should I try to sell it outright or team up with a developer and do something with it? How do I get the most out of this property? Yeah, what do you think of that? I mean, what's the best, best case scenario? Real estate is not our... Um, field of expertise here but well it really depends if I were the client um, and I'm thinking of whether I want to make use of the property and actually manage it would I still have the energy the time and um, really want to do it to, to make maximize the property then I can probably find a developer rent it out or do whatever on the other hand um, if you just want to sell it, cash it out, and enjoy the funds, or let the money work for you, then that's altogether, you know, a different thing. Yeah. Right. It's almost like a trick question, huh? It's but tough. I think I think the immediate really answer also would be which of the two would give you the best return. That's right? exactly it. Which Shell, would give you the best return? Sell it or JD, you know, do a joint development. Mm. I mean, yeah. So development is kind of longer term yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. It's almost like a retirement exactly. plan. You develop that property, mm -hmm. and and then you you get. Uh, income from it on right. a regular basis. Right. You still have to manage it. Yeah, so, so, it's, yeah. so that it's makes it different from somebody still. working. Yeah. For if you just invest it and you don't really have to monitor it, mm -hmm. right. put it in a fund, makes it. W for me, mm -hmm. I think that w if you can actually afford not to, you know, develop, develop it, it yeah. just sell yeah. it. Well, okay, sell I'll it. give you another analogy. Sorry yes. that I have to use analogies in sure. my explanation. That's Maybe fine. my background is trainer. There are two types of uh, people, men, or two types mm -hmm. of men. The man at work or the money at work. Okay? Yeah. So it will depend uh, for, for the one who like brought in the question. Are you still willing to work? <coughs> when you develop exactly. a property, yeah. certainly you have to engage yourself in some kind of a labor or, mm -hmm. ma or managing them. Or would you rather that in cash it, put it in a bank, and let that money earn interest? Mm -hmm. Put it in mutual funds in, yes. in a company, it will give you probably money the same for you. So it will depend on how what, what you really want to happen mm -hmm. at that stage, certain stage in your life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whether you still want to work or just like you like your money to work for you. Mm -hmm. So is it, is it also worth the uh, hassle of running it? Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's yeah. the question. Okay. Correct. Well, That's we part have of the consideration. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's another question, We have I think, another yeah. question from Mabel. She asks, is it important to get insurance for individual big ticket items like televisions, electronics, art and jewelry is that worth uh, insuring art jewelry electronics this is another type of insurance it's called a non-life insurance we're actually some life we're engaged in the life insurance yeah. insuring of uh, yeah, uh, persons yeah this property depends on how much you value it uh, then again but are you willing to pay a certain amount of premium mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to losing the property right it all depends yeah if you value well, well a television how much a television will cost mm. Probably on uh, bigger items that you wish right. to, to insure. Maybe okay. a car right. or a house, right? right? That in the event that you lose that property, it right. would mean a lot to you. Right. What about artwork? I think artwork, it really depends on if it's made by somebody famous or the value. has a right, value. Right. Yeah. You know, if it's worth more than the house, maybe I would just <laughs> <laughs> insure the painting. But insure I, the house I, yeah, so, so that they don't get in. Mm -hmm to get the painting. <laughs> yeah, but if right. you get the painting out of the house. Yeah. The concept is really, the concept of getting life insurance is that the event you lose that property, mm -hmm. how much value would you like to, to get okay. from it? Right. You talk about life insurance. Now, I always thought that if you did not, if you didn't have any dependents and you were on your own, it wasn't actually worth getting life insurance. Do you agree with this or not? Are there other <laughs> scenarios? I think uh, yeah, that, that question, <laughs> I like answering that question. Because well, life insurance is also not just um, for dependents, but it all, it's, it's also for the person who's insured that you want to um, make sure that you're independent financially and 
that you're not dependent on anybody at, a, at any point, especially when you're retired. So even if you don't have any dependents, it would be good to get a life insurance just so that you, it's like putting your money in the bank. You're putting it in a policy, but you're also protected so that should anything happen to you while you're paying for it, um, there's also the disability protection, which provides protection that if you don't, you're not able to pay for it, the life insurance company will be we'll the one to take yep. care of it. Okay. Okay. And critical illness, I suppose. Yeah. So yes. if you get you very sick, riders, you lose yeah. your job. Yes, mm -hmm. that's one of the features. The insurance mm -hmm. covers you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for that amount that you're protected for. So that you're able to maximize uh, or, or use another money the insurance company's okay. money to, to, yeah. to take care of to you. Take care of you. Yes. Okay. Most important, you have a partner. Is, most important yeah. is actually, for as long as you can afford to prepare for your future, then mm -hmm. go ahead and prepare for your f future. Okay. Don't rely your future to somebody else, or your loved ones in particular. Okay. Because they too, especially your children, we'll have they too needs. will have, have their own obligations. Yeah. obligations yeah. In the future. Sure. So for as long as you have an access to income, prepare for that future. So okay. Mel, even so if you're thanks. an individual. Yeah, okay, <laughs> even if I'm an individual, I should get it. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's good to know. Anyway, I wish we had more time for yeah. questions, but we're out of time. Send us your money questions via email, Twitter, or Facebook, and we'll try to answer them in our upcoming episodes on or on our next Q&A Friday. Great discussions, guys. My main take home, just like a doctor, you need professional advice for professional and very specific needs, yes. such as money. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That's our show today. I'm Edric Mendoza. Join us again tomorrow for more talk and tips so you're always right on the money.